Hey, what's up? It's Romp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, and this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to crossfade between multiple background loops, background sounds. So let's grab a sound now. So grab just one of the looping sounds. Just leave it on ambience. I'm going to set it to Arctic. All right, now we need to grab a variable. What we're going to do is we're going to build a volume control for one sound, and then we'll copy it across for two more sounds. And then I'll show you how to control those. So let's grab a data source, variable data source. This is going to be our volume. Just drop this in. Now let's open up our looping sound. Turn on static. That means that you can hear it throughout the whole track. If you turn off static, you only hear the sound when you're close to this tile. If you have static turned on, that means you can hear the sound throughout the whole track. Volume. We're going to connect to that variable by picking a data object, value object. All right, so now we need to change this volume. So we need a set value event. So we're going to use four set value events. So copy them across. We're going to use two and two. One's going to be to turn the volume up. One's going to be, or one set of two is going to turn the volume up, and one set of two is going to turn the volume down. So select all four of them. Their event target is going to be the variable, the volume variable. All right, now we're going to use three more variables to control this whole thing. So grab another variable, put it up. This one's going to be which sound is playing. This is going to control which sound, which sound you want to hear. The second one is going to be the maximum volume. So we're going to set that to 100 now. And then the third one is going to be the transition time, the amount of time it takes to transition between the two sounds that you're fading in between. Okay, for now, for this one, we're just going to set this to 1 now. So it's going to take 100 ticks for it to fade from one sound to the second sound. All right, so now with these set value events, I'm going to bring this down a little bit because it's a little high and far away, so we're not so far away from it. Bring this down a bit. Okay. All right, so now the first set value event, we're going to set to the maximum volume. The second one, we're going to set to increase by the transition value. Okay, this third one, we're going to leave at set to zero. And the fourth one, we're going to set to decrease by the transition value. So now what we need to do is grab a filter. We're going to grab a generic filter, put it in one for each set of two set value events. The first filter, we're going to open it up. We're going to connect the comparison value to the variable. And the second comparison value is going to be to the maximum volume. First thing, true event, we're going to change the operation to greater than or equal to. So if the, if the variable or the volume is greater than the maximum volume, which is true, we're going to set it to the maximum volume. If it's less than the maximum volume, we're going to increase it until it gets to the maximum volume. All right, so for the second generic filter, we're going to compare to the variable once again. We're going to leave it set to zero. We're going to set our operation to less than or equals to. In our true event, if it's less than zero, we want to set it to zero. If it's not less than zero, we want to decrease it until it gets to zero. All right, so now that's all you need for the volume and the sounds. Now we just need to split between those. So let's grab this whole section with an area selector. So I grabbed the whole thing and we're going to group this together. Then I'm going to copy it twice and we're going to put in different background sounds here. We're going to put in Space Drone 1. It's a nice different sound. And the third sound here, we're going to put in, you guessed it, Swamp 1. We have to. We have no choice. We have to use it. All right. All right, so now to split between these, we need to have a filter to split between them. And we're going to use, under filters, we're going to use a switch filter. I'm going to put that under the first variable that we made. We're going to use an interval trigger to power that. So we're going to grab that. And we're going to grab state events to 
turn that on and off. Two state events, and then we need three more set value events. So three set value events, one for each sound. All right, so now let's start here in set value events. Select all three of them, and the event target is going to be the first variable that we put up here to control which sound. Open up the first set value event, and we're gonna set it to one. Second set value event, we're gonna set it to two. And the third one, set to three. All right, now how a switch filter works is, it looks at a case, comparison value, and it compares. So let's open up the switch filter. Comparison value is gonna be that variable. We're gonna case value it, so if it's equal to one, then we're gonna do something. If it's equal to two, we're gonna do something. And if it's equal to three, we're gonna do something. We're gonna set the fourth value to negative one so it never gets selected because we're not setting that value to negative one. Now, for each of these sounds, we need a split we need an impulse splitter. So we're gonna grab an impulse splitter, put it in one for each sound set, because we're gonna to need to turn up the sound that we want and turn down the other sounds. All right, so now, kind of jumping around a little bit. Okay, so with the interval trigger, we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna set this to one tick per frame, and we're gonna to go to the switch filter. We're gonna connect the on and the off events event targets are going to go to the interval trigger one's going to turn it on and one's going to turn it off now we need a delay event uh, filter sorry delay filter because I want to delay and I usually have started doing this lately is to delay one tick after I set a value so you want to delay one tick and go to the on event so now these three set value events are going to take their event filter over to the delay event so what we're doing is we're going to set the value, we're going to wait one tick to confirm that value being set, then we're going to turn on this interval trigger, which is going to go to this switch filter. It's going to see that the value is set to what we set to. So the first case value, we're going to go to the first splitter, second case value, second splitter, and third case value, third splitter. All right, so now with these splitters, what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the volume on the sound that we want. So the left hand one is going to be turned up the volume, the right hand one is going to be turned down the volume on the other two sounds. We're going to do the same with the other splitter. We're going to turn up the volume that we want, we're going to turn down the volumes that we don't want. And the third one, same thing, we're going to turn up the volume that we want, we're going to turn down the volumes that we don't want. Alright, now once we have reached the volume that we want, we're going to need to turn off the interval trigger powering it. So we're going to select the set to 100 on all three of these groups. And we're going to take its event filter up to the off state event. Alright, so now that's going to turn it on, set the value until it reaches 100, and then it's going to turn off. Now let me show you how we're going to trigger this, we're going to use an area trigger. Set it to rectangle, make it a little larger. Just set them down. So I'm going to set one here to set to the second sound. So on hit, we're going to go to the second sound, set the value to two. On the second hit, we're going to go to the third sound, set the value to three. On the third hit, we're going to go to the first sound and set the value back to 1. Alright, so now at this one transition, maximum, vi maxim maximum volume is 100. So let's turn up the 100 value on the first sound to start us off. It's pretty loud. Alright, so let's set this to 100. And what we'll do is, all right, so now let's test the track and let me show you how this works. All right, I'm gonna turn on the editor icon so we can see the hit area triggers. See us hit them. So 
So you see it fades between the sounds. It takes 100 ticks, it's a little more than a second. Alright, so now let me show you what you can do. You can set this number. The transition number. You can set that to a lower number. Let's go to 0.5 and you'll see when we ride the track it takes twice as long for the sounds to transition to the next sound. Alright. Alright, so you can adjust the volume. This adjusts the volume for everything and tests for that volume. And this uh, can adjust your transition. You can go down to lower numbers. I would suggest going too low if you're not going to be making it very far before it changes because then it won't make the full change. So just make sure you go far enough to make it transition all the way to 100 before you try to change it to another sound unless you're changing it quickly. You make this number larger and it'll change faster. So that's pretty much how you do it. To add another uh, sound you would just copy this, bring it over and add the new sound and then corresponding numbers to test for it and setting numbers to set it. So that's pretty much how you do it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like.